So you're thinking of picking up yourself a used MacBook Air M1. What exactly do you need to consider? Let's start off with why you're considering it. The MacBook Air M2 has recently been released. And for some of you who were on the fence about getting the M1 in the first place are now considering it because of the price drop. And now you're seeing the reviews come out for the MacBook Air M2 and you're thinking, how much better is it? And how much more is it? That's certainly what I've been considering and I've got the MacBook Air M1, which is why I'm probably not gonna upgrade, but I'm thinking about it, but I'm probably not gonna upgrade. So going back to those who didn't purchase the M1 initially, you're seeing the M2, release and now you're thinking should I get the M1 so if you are considering it so let's just say you've considered buying a MacBook Air M1 but you're not going to buy one brand new you're going to buy a used one and save a bit of money which is which is quite you know quite good it's been out for a, a couple years now a lot of people do take good care of their MacBooks and you're bound to pick one up quite good but you need to consider these points firstly make sure it's off a reputable seller now you can go on eBay you're protected so obviously if you're you buy it and it doesn't match the description or they send you a box of pebbles or something, you can get your money back straight away. But just double check every single part of that description, every part of that picture as well. If you see something on the picture that doesn't make sense, question the seller, ask them, what's that dent? What's that? What's this? What's that? I have looked at a few on there just for M1s, just to sort of see how it's going. And it's some of the dodgy pictures people have taken. It, it could be a reflection, it could be a dent, you don't know, but you have to check them. Find out if it's got Apple Care. A lot of Mac users end up getting Apple Care. So if it's got one that can be transferred, definitely get it because that'll add a bit more value to your MacBook when you when you receive it used. Confirm that it is in full working order. Okay, I know this seems a bit stupid. The amount of cases I've heard where a laptop's been ordered, a used one, and they've got it and maybe a USB doesn't work or, or there's a uh, something else going on with it the wi-fi keeps dropping but just ask them and check it's if it's in full working order and indeed when you receive it do an apple diagnostic test on it instructions i can just put in the link below uh, on how to do it but it's really useful if you get one of these done obviously the next thing is to make sure it's been cleared obviously you don't want the previous person's data still on it that has been completely wiped that you've access to uh, an administrator password that's if they haven't reset it obviously in terms of firmware password i won't go into that too much but it was for the act for the intel max you just need to make sure firevolt is file vault is on and that it's basically ready for a new user there are instructions on the apple website to do this and i don't think anybody selling their macbook air will want to go through these um, first because the last thing I would want to do if I'm selling my MacBook Air M1 is to give somebody else access to my iCloud account and everything I'd want to wipe it clear physically is it fine does it match the description any dents do the ports look okay particularly check the USB-C ports and have a look is the sort of pin inside is it bent can it still um, has it got any blockages in it? Can it still take a cable quite easily? How loose is it? Because if you put the cable out and you can pull it out, it's obviously not a good one. Same thing with the headphone jack. Check those as well. How loose is the hinge on the screen? Uh, when it shuts, does it shut comfortably? What's, what are the rubber feet like on the bottom? Does it sit flat? Is the MacBook itself bent? Now we talked a bit about in my previous videos about the screen being bent because I'm pretty sure the screen would crack if it was bent. Going onto the screen, you check for any dead pixels. See, it's all in good working order. Check that the camera works as well. Check the keyboard, just slam on, not slam all the keys, but just type on all the keys and just see that all the keys are in working order. Same with the mouse as well. Check that the mouse works, that the tracking's quite accurate. Put it through its paces, do a bit of editing, download a few games, don't get me started on Apple games, honestly. But yeah, put it through its paces and see if it either heats up or it doesn't. Generally a sign of a faulty laptop before was if it heated up, maybe because the fans weren't great or it was dusty. But I mean, with the M1, you probably won't get that issue, at least not now, it's too soon to sort of pick that up. Just keep an eye on the Wi-Fi. Does the Wi-Fi drop uh, if it does? more than likely it could be either an issue with your internet or it could be an issue with laptop which in that case you try another device just to see if that one doesn't drop apple is your friend okay get that serial number if you're not sure about it ask them where it's come from in some cases they can tell you whether it's been tracked i mean you can make it up talk to apple and say oh i just received this as a gift blah 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 where's it actually come from and they can tell you a bit of information about it obviously there's only so much they can track but if you tell them if the seller on ebay for example says it's six months old and you contact apple and they're like no it was bought purchased two years ago then you know someone's telling 
lies basically if you purchase it used make sure that the thing actually works and i'm sure if you get a bargain you want it to work and you would be fully satisfied with it working fully in terms of battery life you want to make sure it has the maximum amount of cycle counts as possible at this stage you'll be lucky to get 100 percent if you're trying to grab a bargain my one's actually hit 99 percent battery condition now but anything below 95 percent possibly i don't know i wouldn't look at it though um but uh, it's up to you really. It depends how long you're going to use it for. If your intention is to buy a used MacBook Air M1 and keep it for 10 years, I would actually buy a new one maybe. Just you might run into issues that I wouldn't keep a MacBook for that long anyway. At least not sort of the ones released nowadays. And then obviously depending on your budget, check the specs. There's a lot of argument, a lot of arguments, debates going around about eight gigabytes versus 16 gigabytes. I personally think eight gigabytes is fine. I've seen my memory being used up right to eight gigabytes it goes into the SSD drive for page filing, which is absolutely fine for me. It just means a few things reload now and again, if I use it while the RAM's full. I'm not a heavy user, and if you are a heavy user, you need to consider the MacBook Pro, because this thing will throttle. There's no fan on it. It will just drop down in processor speed to reduce the temperature. But then that's, you shouldn't be on this video. If you're considering getting a MacBook Air M1 used, you should have already decided that the MacBook Air M1 is the right one for you. Just something extra with performance, obviously if you've decided it is for you, the 8GB one is fine. 256 gigabytes if you're using Final Cut Pro, you're going to run out of space. The amount of library files I've had to delete and I've had to back up straight away, it is irritating. 512 is a good sweet spot if you can afford it, get the one terabyte version. Um, you can survive in the 256 gigabytes, I'm doing it right now, I've got an external SSD which I just back up the library files on. I delete them every time it gets full up but it's just it's annoying how much the raw files take up especially 4k editing. If you're buying the MacBook Air M1 for gaming don't just don't. But I know in terms of locations buying it used you've got eBay is the Facebook market, Craigslist in the U USA, what one's in the UK? I mean to be honest anywhere in the UK you put it on you're going to get people ringing up with silly offers anyway. Um, old Gumtree that's the one. And the thing is if you grab a really good bargain then you know by all means go for it. If you're for example the MacBook Air M1 you can probably pick up for £900 brand new on a sale. If you're buying one used for £800 and it's the same thing, for saving that £100, wouldn't you pay £100 more for peace of mind and actual warranty? Obviously it depends what you're getting. If you're paying seven to £800, you get Apple Care with it and it's in fantastic condition, then yeah, that's great. And if the specs are more as well. But yeah, I thought I'd make this quick video, obviously, because I'm still loving my MacBook Air M1. I'm considering not even going near the MacBook Air M2, it's still debatable. It's more whether I can sell this one later on, but it is such a fantastic laptop. Oh yeah, it doesn't fingerprint and the uh, paint doesn't scuff off or anything. Any of the, you who are looking to get midnight color for M2 or considering it, just rethink that one. But yeah, this is such a fantastic laptop. It does exactly what you need it to. Just go over the video and just check exactly, you know, what you need to check for in buying a used MacBook Air M1. Like I said, if you get it off eBay, you're protected, but if you get it off a marketplace, there is a danger, because once you give them the cash, you're really gonna find that seller privately. I mean, you might not be able to locate them or contact them again, especially if you've spent a lot of money on it and you find something wrong with it, or I have heard a few horror stories. But anyway, I mean, my personal opinion is to play it safe, try to buy it new. There are some good 0% finance deals, like you can, I mean, Apple's got one on now for like 24 months, 0%, which is quite, it's quite good. There's also the education store for teachers and students. They knock about 10% off of it. And I believe if you buy a MacBook now, they're giving some £120 or $120 uh, iTunes voucher, which is not bad. But hey, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, if you've managed to last <laughs> until this long in the video, but otherwise, thanks for watching.